it is a gray gray day and I'm really hoping the lighting will be good for this lesson thanks so much guys hi guys uh, welcome and I'm uh, editing my next uh, Hardanger stitch along which you'll see in in just a moment uh, however, I did notice a few things, two things in particular, that I wanted to point out that I didn't in the video. First of all, it looks as though I'm pulling the thread very hard, or somewhat hard, when I stitch my cluster blocks. I'm actually not. It just seems to look that way, so keep that in mind. Uh, don't pull too hard, but uh, do try to keep even tension. The second thing is, let me look at my note, uh, oh yes, <clears throat> I keep saying when I get to the end of a cloister block, I sink my thread. Um, some of you may wonder, where, where the heck am I sinking that needle? <laughs> it's actually at the very last stitch of the cloister block. So if that was a question, or if you don't quite understand that, please let me know and I, I'll uh, explain it much better. But uh, when I sink my needle, I'm just completing the last stitch of that cloister block. Thanks so much, guys, and I uh, hope you enjoy. Bye-bye. Hello. Welcome back to uh, my uh, Hardanger Stitch Along. It's Nina with Stitching with a Smile, and uh, I am glad that you're here. Thank you. Okay, we're on our next step. So, on our pattern... I've marked in blue, let me get a pair of scissors, I've marked in blue what we've stitched, we've stitched this, and we've stitched this. So this is only a quarter, we've stitched it on all four corners. What we're going to do now is do this center section of cloister blocks. And I'm going to have you start, let me turn this upside down, I'm going to have you start here. So let's bring that in more. We're going to start here. Again, the same thing, we're going to come up at the uh, dot, go down at the arrow, up and down, up and down. Same as all our other cloister blocks, up and down, and then come up here and go down. Remember we're sharing this hole. So same as all the other cloister blocks. There will be 26. So let me show you quickly what I've done. I went ahead and redrew this on uh, smaller graph paper so that we could get the whole thing in. So the first thing we're going to do, let me turn it this way, you can see it there, is we're going to start at this one and we're going to stitch all the way to the other end. And then we can start at this one, actually we can just turn it, and start at this one, it'll look exactly like the other and stitch all the way to the end. There are 26 of these cloister blocks, not including what's out here. It's just the interior cloister blocks. There are 26 of them. So let's do that together. I'll get you started. I'll stitch and then we'll come back so that we can see the ending and start the next one. This is where we're going to start. Let me bring this down so you can see. It's this area. We're going to do the line of cluster blocks going up here. Once again, um, we could do a waist knot, but let's take advantage of these cluster blocks and actually uh, put our threads behind these. This is where I'll be coming up. So I think I'll put my threads behind those so that I can come up here. Let me turn this over. And...
this is where we're going to be coming up so I don't want to put my thread underneath this because it'll just pull it so I just came out here Let's bring back, we'll bring back this showing that we're going to come up and down, up and down. done something wrong. Okay, and we just carry on stitching that all the way up to here, and I'll come back and I'll see you when we get here. I keep forgetting that uh, I want to stop and show you starting and ending of threads. Um, this is just if, uh, if you're still uncertain. So I've come to pretty close to the end of my thread, and I'm going to stop here. So I'll finish this cloister block. I'll sink my needle to the back. So it's at the back. I'm just going to bring it up further away and out of the way and park it. Again, because what I'm going to do is this thread that I've parked back here, I will anchor behind the stitches I'm going to stitch here. So the new thread, I'm going to anchor behind these stitches. So let me bring out the back. Anchor my thread. This is my old thread, which I'll anchor in the stitches once they're stitched. This is the new thread that I will sink to the front and carry on stitching. I'll see you when we get here. So I did all 26 blocks, and if you remember, that does not include this first one or the last one. It is just 26 counted in the middle. And really you don't need to count because you're starting here and this will stop you. 
One thing I wanted to point out was um, with my, I don't know if this is considered variegated or over dyed, um, I don't pay attention to where the color starts or stops. I just start stitching. <laughs> and I don't think you can really tell. So for instance, I started stitching here. So this was one thread going all the way up. I stopped on this cloister block and finished this cloister block. This was the next cloister block that I started with the new thread. And yes, it's a different color from this, but it really blends in because even if you look further up, it, it just blends right in. So I don't really pay attention to my colors. I just go ahead and stitch. Now, we did this. Let me get my pattern back out here. Let me find it here. Okay. So, we did this. We started here on this cloister block and we stitched that. So in order for this to look exactly the same on this side, I just turn it around. This is the one we did. This is the new one and it looks exactly the same. And we will stitch this one up. I've already secured my thread. Just turning my work and I'm going to start here and it'll be exactly as we did this one. So I'll do this and I'll come back. Okay, so we've stitched the two full ones. Turn your fabric so that you're starting again at the same kind of spot which makes it easy to remember how to stitch. And you're going to start stitching this way. And this way will be a little bit different in that you will stitch from here to here. You'll have to go underneath and then from here to here underneath and then from here to here. I'll show you once we once we get there. On the pattern, let me turn it so that uh, it's facing. On the pattern, the blue has been stitched and we're going to be stitching the yellow. So you can see that we'll be stitching these, not this one because it's already stitched. We'll stitch these, again, not this one, and these. And then turn your fabric and do it one more time. But I'll come back. Okay, so again to orient you. I've started here, I'm coming up, and I'm on the last cloister before this one. Let me finish that with you. You'll see that the thread goes into this hole and I also share the same hole when I come out. So this thread's going in and this thread is in there as well. Okay, now I need to continue up here. So I'm going to sink my needle to the back. I'm going to turn my work. And all I'm going to do is go underneath that cloister block come back up and continue on so you do want to make sure that you're going to be going in the right direction with your cloister block this one in this case is going is that uh, horizontal. So it's going horizontally, this one's going vertically, and then we'll go horizontally again. 
Another way to see is that there's a space here. This one's horizontal, so this one will be horizontal. Let me stitch it just so you can see. And that's really the only thing you want to be very careful about is the way in, in this what you're doing here is in the way the um, stitches are that there's a 90 degree we've got stitches going oh, I keep forgetting <laughs> vertically and stitches going horizontally or opposite depending on which way you have your fabric facing Okay, again, I will continue up. I'll meet you again just to make sure there's no surprises. Okay, so I'm back up to meet with this cloister block. I'm going to sink my needle. We'll do that first. We're going to flip our fabric. There's my thread. I'm going to go under this cloister block and uh, I'm not sure which side I want to be on. I want to be right there. Okay. And I will stitch up. Okay. So we've stitched up here we went underneath these stitches at the back we stitched up here again underneath the stitches at the back continued up and we should line up exactly to match these stitches up here I will sink my needle I'll thread it in after or secure it at the back after and did I lose my scissors here we go and the next thing you need to do is find your next starting point. We need to do the one that comes down here. You could start here, that doesn't matter. But in the video I've been showing you the start here, so that's where I'll start. I'll go up and I'll do this entire thing. And that will be the lesson for today. We'll have all the cloister blocks done inside here. Let's take a look at our pattern and see where we're at. So where are we at? Okay, so after today, you'll have done this entire motif. You'll have done all four of these. You'll have done this cloister block surround all the way around. And then you'll have completed all of these cloister blocks within. Maybe next time we'll get this done so that we can get the satin stitches of the interior completely done. We'll do that. So we'll see you next time. Once again, thank you so much for following and for subscribing. Um, I'm, I'm so glad to see this interest because that means that this technique and this stitching will continue. There is interest out there. Thanks so much, guys. Bye-bye.